one of the things we love most about this community is that there are always so many things to be thankful for. And uh, right now, I invite you to take a breath and be thankful for the fact that Michael J. Brundy has been a part of this community for 25 years. <laughs> Many of you are so accustomed to seeing him right here at this microphone, being one of our platform assistants. But many of you, if you haven't been around the center for a long time, don't know very much about him. So today I get to fill in a few of the blanks for you. Things that you didn't know. <laughs> Is this my opportunity to get back at him for all the times he's talking about me? No, I'm not going to do that. So Michael Brundy has been a member of CSL Dallas uh, for 25 years. He's been a student of science of mind, though, for just under 30 years. He is a motivational speaker. He's a storyteller. And he's the author of four books. The most recent book is titled Make a Point, Tell a Story. And uh, you've observed him do that over and over again when he has spoken before. He retired from the telecommunications industry a couple of years ago after completing more than 40 years working in the industry to much success. Currently, because any of you who have retired know that often it is the doorway to more work than you ever did when you were being paid for it. Michael serves as the president of the Tejas Storytelling Association. He is serving also as the president of the Dallas Storytelling Guild. He is a board member for the ACE Foundation, and he is a life member and a leader locally in Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. Some of you also know that he is a marathoner and sets an example for us physically. And he has served here at CSL Dallas in dozens of roles. And I'll only name a few of them. He has been on the core council. He served on the nominating core. He currently serves as a platform assistant. And every time we've had a renovation or a move, he has been a part of the leadership of that as well. If you ask Michael, what does he consider his purpose? It is to communicate with others. He in aspires to inform, inspire, and entertain audiences with his speaking. And in case you want more after today, do not hesitate to go to storiesbymichael.com, storiesbymichael.com. So that's a little bit about him. If you want some of the behind the scenes stories, you'll have to find me in Fellowship Hall because right now it's much more important for you to hear directly from Michael about lessons learned in 25 years of Science of Mind and CSL. Please join me in welcoming Michael Grundy. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Tracy. I've known Tracy for forever. And uh, 25 years of CSL Dallas. And the first thing that I can tell you will be the same thing that, I, that I'll tell you in the end, and that is this stuff really works. This stuff really works. We've had a whole bunch of different sayings around here over the years, and every year we come up with a new one. And that's been my favorite one. And I think we started maybe, I don't know, five, 10 years ago. But you can say it however you want. This stuff really works, this spirit really works, or this shit really works. I could care less. But this stuff works. So first, let me uh, set the table so that we are uh, all in the same place, OK? 
one thing that we always say is that we're, we're diverse around here and we're spiritually progressive, okay? That's why you see me, <laughs> okay? And when you see me, you don't get the same that you normally get. Uh, I, I don't have the pretty blonde hair like Petra, and do you see is not a part of my vocabulary a lot, okay? I, I'm, I'm not quite as uh, disciplined, say, as Tracy, so I can't just like stand in one spot and speak. I'll, I'll move around over here, and I'll move around over here. And, and, and I'm not nearly as wild and crazy as Karen, so I surely won't be walking on any fire or any of that kind of crazy stuff. Um, I've been here a long time, so I kind of know what you guys expect, and I've been in your spot a lot, so normally you come here and you learn a lot, so you've got your little tablets out and you're writing and you're waiting for the screen to change so you can take your pictures nowadays. Uh, that will not be happening. <laughs> Just so you know, okay? Uh, though I can never change the slides quick enough, and it doesn't seem to go with what's going on in my head, so I figured heck with that, okay? There'll be just one word that you'll need to write down if you want to write down and take some notes. And that one word will carry you through the whole topic. And it'll carry you through your life, probably, okay? So um, with that being said, a lot of people, I know it, and I'll just tell you, the elephant that's in the room, okay? A lot of times I know when I'm up here being platform assistants or when you, people just see me walking around here, they wonder, just like they do with all of you, okay, in case you don't know, I wonder how that guy got here. I, I mean, why, how'd that black guy get up there? You know, is, is he another one of the gay guys? Is, is that him up there? Is that what he's doing? Or, or, or how'd the straight guy get up here? Is he married? I mean, what, what got him here? And how did he get here? And why does he keep coming back? Well, well, let me tell you. I have always been a big fan of history. I, I, I just love history. And, and real quick. Richard, I'm really sorry, I can't stand still, so you'll have to just keep moving, okay? <laughs> but because I love history, you know, I, that got me deep into to American history. I, I'm from Kansas, and Kansas has a lot of good history. And if you get into American history for me, then you got to get into black history, because that's big, a part of it, and because I'm black. So I really, really enjoyed learning about black history when I was young. And there's no way that you can study American black history with not eventually getting into, into African history. And if you study African history, you'll get into African philosophies and African religions. And if you do that, then you'll get into all kinds of ancient religions and, and mystery systems and all kinds of things that even happened before, before Jesus, before the Bible, all types of things. You know, because as a kid, I used to always wonder, well, what happened to those folks who, who came before Jesus and didn't get a chance to go through that? You know, what, what happened to the folks who came before Moses and didn't get that information? What, what about the folks who lived over in Ireland and maybe got a different message? How, how does all that come together? And, and what I think happens is, I think it's about belief, what you believe in. I think that's extremely powerful. And, and I know what I believe in. I believe in what's taught here. But I'm not nearly as, I'm not that arrogant to think that this is the only way. It's one way. And it's a way that works for me. And, and I hope that everybody finds a way that works for them. And you can tell when you find a way that works for you. Because when you find that, you've had that experience. When you come in here, you start listening, you start just participating, you say, ah, oh, I'm home. And, and, and that's how it feels. But I don't want you to think that this is the only place it could possibly be home. I just want to tell you my story and, and how I see it, okay? And we had a, we had a great example of this in, in our men's circle yesterday. Now, normally we don't tell stuff that happens in the men's circle, but I don't think Jeff will mind if I tell this a little bit. But Jeff Fritz had the example of they had just went to Thailand. And in Thailand, everybody's Buddhist. And I mean, it's heavy Buddhist, heavy, heavy Buddhist. But he said... It was palpable. You could feel the kindness of those people. Just feel it because they were so kind. You know, and, and everybody was, was Buddhist. Now, I, we got a lot of Christians around here, and I'm not so sure that we can always walk around our country and just feel that <laughs> kindness. So, you know, Buddhism may have some, 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 some you know, valid points because something happens. So I'm not to say that, you know, Science of mind is the only thing, but it's the thing that works for me. It, it works for me because it's a part of those ancient mystery systems, those ancient ways that tell us how to live. And, and it works for me because it's 
science. Science of mind. And, and, and I can deal with science. That was my problem when I was a kid. I'd go to school and I'd hear about science, and I'd come back to church and I'd hear about something different, and, and the two didn't always mix. But, but for me and here, I can make it mix. I know you guys enjoy the eclipse, right? See that picture up there? You enjoy that eclipse, right? Now, here's how I describe the eclipse. The eclipse, it was a scientific event. It was a scientific thing. You know, it's about physics, how the moons and how planets orbit and move and all that stuff. But it had a spiritual outcome. You know that? It had a spiritual outcome. Did you see how all those folks got together? No fighting, no arguing. They weren't worried about if you were Republican, Democrat, white, black, green, yellow, tall, fat, or any of that. We all just were, wow! Right? Having that spiritual thing about something that was just scientific. And, and for me, that's, that's what works. I like that idea of science in, in, in our minds. That, that works for me. So when I was thinking about, well, what would I talk about? And what can I say that I've learned over 25 years? Because I told Petra, well, I want to share the laws that work for me, the universal principles that I learned here that, that I've practiced and I've been practicing for 25 years. See, a lot of times I, I see people talking about, well, I'm trying to get there. I, I want to be one day, and, and this is my goal. Well, by the time you get to my age, some of that stuff you should have done, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, I, and I'm, I'm here to tell you a different way, because I've done the stuff, okay? I've seen it. It's worked in my life. And, and I'm here to tell you that it will also work in your life. When, when I started thinking, I said, well, maybe I can come up with a good acronym. I've got a friend named Sporty King, and Sporty can come up with an acronym for everything that you can think of. But I'm just not that good. But this one word kept coming up over and over and over and over. And this is the one word that you need to write down if you're going to write down anything. That word was grace. G-R-A-C-E. Grace. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was going to tell Candy that that was going to be the topic, grace. But I knew she'd go sing an amazing grace and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and that's, that's a whole different story, and I don't, didn't want to go there. So I didn't tell her that. But, but I started hearing about all kinds of different definitions of grace. I, I saw something on Facebook where Tracy Brown was talking about walking gracefully and with joy or something like that. And it's like, oh, that's another way that you can describe grace. You know, being smooth and cool, that, that's like grace. But when I looked up in the dictionary, they, they had a couple of de de definitions that really kind of stood out. The one I like best is the one I learned first when I was just a little kid. You know, when you say grace and you have breakfast and lunch and dinner, and you have to say grace and say thank you, well, that, that's a good one. But the one we more commonly hear is, you know, God's grace got me through, or if it hadn't been for the grace of God, I would not make it. You know, it was that, that kind of grace. And it's always like it's, well, divine assistance, you know? And, and I don't care if you, your divinity is a deity, a God, a universe, whatever, but it's divine assistance. It just comes from somewhere to help you. The, the other definition that I hear a lot is it's undeserved assistance, you know, like, like you don't really deserve it. Now, that one, I don't really like that too much because that undeserved part just doesn't fit too well with me. So I dug a little deeper, and I found out that, well, what they really meant about undeserved is like unearned, like I didn't have to work for it. I didn't, you know, like I got paid without doing the work. And, and, and that's kind of cool with me. So when I look at grace, I look at grace as those two things, okay? One is that, uh, you know, it, it's there. It's like those universal laws. They are there. I didn't have to do nothing to create them. And, and they work whether I want them to or not. They are just there. And I can use them. That's the thing, that there's this power, this power in the universe that we can use. And I define it by calling it grace, okay? Now, let me tell you what I mean when I say grace, okay? Because I got something for each one of those letters. Now, I tried to do that acronym thing, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I couldn't come up with just one word for each letter because I kept coming up with another word and another word and another word. So if I get kind of off and I give you two or three words, I, it's a blessing. You got extra, okay? 
But the G is for, to me, it's like forgiving and gratitude and gratefulness. And see how that song tied in, that being thankful tied right in without me even having to ask. Gratitude is a, a law, but it is powerful. And it's a law that you can use. You know, I'm not talking about just, oh, write it down and, oh, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm saying that it's something that you can put in your life and use it. Now, I love to run, and I run every morning if I'm good. At least I get five days a weekend. But, you know, and I try to do it first thing because I call it winning the morning. And if I can win the morning, I can win the day. And if I start off my day by exercising, everything else is going to be cool, okay? But most people don't believe it. But it is just as hard for me to get up out of that bed as it is for anybody else. You know, the, the sheets, I got flannel sheets, and those sheets are good and warm, you know? Every now and then I might have somebody sleeping even next to me, and that's even warmer. You know, but getting up out of bed in the morning, that is tough for me. And to go exercise, too. But when I was young, you know, I had a reason to go exercise. I wanted to look good for the girls and all that. I could care less about that anymore. But now I want to be healthy. You know, so I, I, I have to get up. And, and I will lay in bed, and I'll listen to motivational tapes, and, and I'll listen to stuff over and over to get myself fired up so that I can get up and go do what I need to do. But the most powerful thing I do is I use the tool of gratitude. I lay in bed literally and I say, I am so grateful and so glad I woke up this morning because there are so many, so many who didn't, you know? I've got siblings that are going through health challenges right now and, and, and I'm, I'm wishing the best for them. Matter of fact, I wish I could give them some of my good health but it doesn't work like that, you know? But when I wake up in the morning, I think about all those people who wish they could get up and go run, who wish that they could just could go walk around the block even, or just dress themselves. And then I think about how blessed I am and how could I not get up and do what I'm meant to do. My life is not meant to be in the bed. And when I think about how grateful I am for all the things that have come in my way, that gets me up. It really gets me up out of bed. It's a way of using one of those universal principles to actually move yourself. And if you, if you can't think of anything to be grateful for, okay? I, I, now, bear with me, right, right? Okay, if you can't think of anything to be grateful, hold your breath for about 60 seconds, okay? And I bet something will come to you. <laughs> I bet something will come to you. So when you find yourself in that spot, just, just be grateful. It, it is one of the most powerful things that I've ever learned. And, and along with being grateful comes all those words that are root words from it, you know, giving and being generous, those kinds of things. It all makes a difference. I swear to you that my prosperity comes from my generosity. That's why it comes from my generosity. When, when I was working every month that I got paid, my mother got paid, my stepmother got paid, my father got paid, my mother-in-law got paid every month for 40 years. For 40 years. Now, my investments in my 401k were really great, and I really appreciate that. But what I really think that sustains me is having been generous. Because I give to others, people just give stuff to me. You know, and, and that's the power of being grateful. I think that's the same way the universe works. Just because I'm grateful, I think the universe just throws good stuff at me. Oh, Michael, you're, you're grateful? Here, just throwing rose petals in front of me as I walk. You know, and, and that's a cool way to think of your life, guys. The R, though, is for one that a lot of people don't want to deal with, and that is responsibility. Responsibility. I believe that each of us has the ability to choose how we'll respond in any situation. In any situation, we have that ability to choose that we're going to be responsible for our own lives and what happens in our lives. And, and for years and years, I, I blamed all of my issues on, on, on my parents. You know, my parents divorced. Oh, so no wonder my life is so bad. Oh, my mother left when I was four. Oh, no wonder I can't be committed to no woman or anything like that. Oh, they did this, that, and the other. You know, and, and as long as you say that and you're the victim, and you give that responsibility to the others, you, you, you can't change. Because they're the ones that you give that responsibility to, so they have to change. But when you choose to be responsible for your own life, 
oh, then things begin to happen. You know, and, and each of us has that ability. And if you have that ability, then that gets you to the A, which is that you got to take action. You've got to take action. Most people think that, oh, they can just visualize that stuff and it'll just appear. I, I, I like the vision core and all that, but baby, you got to put forth some work. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. You do have to put forth some work. You have to put forth some effort, some action. You, you, Tracy always says, treat but move your feet. You know, you can't just... And, and if you do that, do it with a positive attitude, a loving attitude. You know, I don't even want somebody to serve me food when they have a hateful attitude. You know, don't cook me no dinner if, you don't, if you're not loving me at the moment, because no telling what will happen with that. You know, I, 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 attitude makes a difference. I've got a sign on, in, in my den at my house, and it's about leadership. It's got a big old wolf on the front of it, and it says that Winning is an attitude, and the attitude of the leader determines the attitude and the speed of the pack. It's your attitude. That's what makes the difference. My attitude is the type that says, if you throw me to the wolves, I'll come back leading the pack. You know, that kind of attitude. I was so blessed to be a little runt growing up. I didn't know it then, but I was so blessed because it made my, my old man, my father kept pushing me out there, making sure I would do things, making sure I wouldn't use my, my size as an excuse not to take action. And he kept doing that, and that developed a different attitude, one of those hustle-hustle attitudes, one of those I-can-make-it attitudes, one of those it doesn't matter how black I am, how nappy my hair is, how big my gap is between my teeth, I can still do great <laughs> things because of my attitude and my willingness to take action. And that gets me to the last two letters, which is the C and the E. And the C and the E are easy. That's just cause and effect. And that's the basis of everything that we learn around here. Cause and effect. We can choose how we're going to have our lives. And if you're a committed person with that C, I'm telling you, things will happen for you. Things will change for you when you make a commitment. All of a sudden, help will come from places that you didn't even imagine help could come from, simply because you're committed. And if you're committed and you work with a sense of excelling, trying to, you know, you don't have to be perfect. I say excel. That means I'm just being the best that I can be. And if I'm the best that I can be, there's nothing else for me to do. There's no more for me to do if I'm being the best that I can be. Now, my best may not be as good as your best in such an area or whatever, but I'm being the best that I can be, and I'm excelling. That, that's what I can do when I talk about cause and effect and the choices that I make in my life. So when I came to CSL Dallas, I started learning all of those different laws and all those different rules. And you know, just, just like with, with speaking, there was a time when I had learned in Toastmasters that you need to do this, 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 and this to speak well. And I said, oh, heck with that stuff. Let me do it my way. It didn't work. <laughs> Same thing with CSL and, and, and the rules here. You know, I, I said, oh, let me do it my way. I, I know how to pray. I don't need that. You know, there's spiritual mind treatment stuff. Let me, let me just do it my way. And, and I tried it, and, and it just didn't work. So what I keep coming back to is, is the principles and the rules and the laws that I've learned here, and that keeps me grounded because this is what works for me. This is home for me. It doesn't have to be for everybody else, and I respect and I'm glad for everybody else. But this is what works for me because I believe in spiritual mind treatment. I believe in the laws and the things that we teach here. Now, I, I say I'm not absolute because I've seen people in other religions and in other churches, and I've seen them do some profound things. And, and I'm not going to say that they can't do what they're doing because they believe differently than me. I'm just saying that the power comes in the belief. And what we teach around here, if you believe it and you practice it, baby, you will have successes that you can't imagine in your life. Now, one of the things that I even told Peter that I was going to do was tell you guys about how all these laws applied and give you examples about how they worked in, in my life. And, and you've heard Tracy talk about, well, I've written books and I ran marathons. Those are the things that, you know, everybody always says, I want to write a book, I want to write a book. Well, I just told you how you can write a book, okay? You use grace and you'll get you a book. And they say, oh, I want to run, I want to get in shape, I want to run a marathon. I just told you. I ran my first marathon when I was 50 years old, okay? That was when I started my first one. So I'm just telling you that you can use those laws and do those things, but, but I didn't want to just tell you about all of my stuff, okay? So last Sunday, 
Last Sunday, I was in Panky Hall, right after service. And you guys know Armando, right? Raise your hand if you know Armando. Yeah, you know Armando. Nice little short Hispanic guy, okay? Armando is, is so impressive to me. He's one of my heroes. He has the cardboard project, and, it's, and that project is one that we here at CSL support. It's one of the four nonprofit projects that, that we support. Well, if you don't know his story, I, I'm, I'm not going to even say I'm ashamed to tell you this. I'm going to say that I'm proud to tell you this. He did something that I couldn't do. I was in the phone telecommunication industry for 40 years, and I, and I had a good position, and I did a lot of good stuff, but one thing I never could get over is what they call the digital divide. The digital divide is that divide between the haves and the haves not when it comes to the digital world. People who have wireless service, people who have DSL service, people who have fax machines, those kind of people versus those who don't. And in the black community, there was always that divide, and I was always trying to, to, to solve that you know, to get the company to do something, to, to do more over here or over there. And it, I got a little bit, you know, but it just really didn't happen. But you know what? This Armando, no degree, okay? No background in, in corporate America or working in the industry. He ain't even black. <laughs> but he decided that he wanted to go to South Dallas, help black people who didn't have digital access to get jobs. So they couldn't get on the internet and do that kind of stuff. But that's what he decided to do, all on his own, all by himself with no background, no nothing, but $300. And he was telling me this, that, this past Sunday. He said, yeah, Michael, I had $300. And he said, now I've got companies that donate all kinds of computer equipment. I get all kinds of grants. And now his company's worth more than a million dollars. Do you hear me? And, and, and I saw him. I knew him before. I knew him when he was just coming here, just taking classes, just learning how. And I saw him step out there on his own and decide to make a difference in the world and, and, and do something that big. And in seven years, he went from $300 to being a million and a half dollars. Can you imagine that? Now, if that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. But I can tell you another story that will, because when I look over here and I see Christine, it reminds me of Susan Schwartz. You guys may or may not know Susan Schwartz, but Susan comes here every now and then. And Susan invited me to this great gala, that eQuest, okay? eQuest is another nonprofit organization that CSL Dallas ties to, okay? And what eQuest does is they use horses for therapy. They start off with disabled veterans, and now they move to other people, but just horses, okay? And they've been doing it, I think, close to 40-some-odd years or whatever. And they invited me to this great big old gala. You were there, you performed. I mean, it was huge. People from everywhere, all over Texas were there. And they raised all kinds of money. And, and this whole thing started just because Susan Schwartz had one idea, one person. One person, one horse, and said, I want to make a difference. And you look up now, and she's got the, I mean, it, it's amazing. And, and Susan's been in this, in this new thought stuff for a long time. And you know what's even better? <laughs> the girl has a way of making sure she can put what she loves the best, dancing, into everything she does. So even when she has this great big old gala, she's out there dancing and performing and loving it. I mean, that tells me that something's happening here. This stuff really does work. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, I, I, I made a list, okay? I started thinking about all the people that I could come up with that were examples of, of using the science of minds principles and doing great things in their life, okay? And this list got to be so, so long. It got to be so long that I said, you know what, I bet I can just look in the audience and just pick somebody and tell you something about their great life, because there'll be that many folks here, and people that are doing that much stuff. Like the doctor over here, Dr. Anderson, she's one of those. And you guys may not know uh, my pal, who I'm extremely proud of, Lynn Hayes, she's my pal. Pal means that when she came into the, organ to the church and she joined, I was like her, her thing, you know, on her, on her arm and all. She was my pal. She is the top, the top DJ in the city. You hear me? The top DJ in the city. But she was that before she came to CSL. But when she got to CSL, I saw her. I saw her. She had some health challenges. I don't even know what they were. That was none of my business. But I know because I saw her talking and praying with people here. And I know being here made a difference in her life. I've seen this stuff work. You hear me? 
I know it works. I've got so many examples that uh, it would get kind of boring if I kept on going. But just looking around, you guys know Terry? Terry Becker? Yeah, yeah, you know Terry. She usually sits right around here. I didn't know Terry's name for years, and I used to call her Pretty Lady because I thought she was so, so pretty. You know, she is one of the top designers. She is a top designer in, in the city. That, that's why we get all these great designs up here. And we've got other people like Cheryl and like Sherry who are also great designers. We have so many great people who are using these tools. So you don't have to just go by my example. They're all around the place. Now, let me just give you some quick history, and then I'll, I'll let you guys go, okay? We have always had great, exciting people using these laws and taking them out into the community. We've always had it. And one of the things that I think is best is that we don't care about people taking their good and going elsewhere and doing whatever. Even Ernest Holmes would tell you that his idea was not to have a church. His idea was just to give you a philosophy that would make you a better Christian, a better Buddhist, a better whatever you might be. And that's the same way I think that we are. The first time we had the Reverend Robert Mitchell, I know you guys remember Robert Mitchell. He was the first person I ever saw leave, leave here. And he was a number of minister. And it's like, how do we get a minister? Oh, what's going to happen? And Petra said what I heard it said about 40 or 50 times by now. We're just tithing to the universe. And, and, and he left. And, and le later on, it was Chris Terry was gone. And, and, and Reverend Patty went and did her thing. And, and, and Reverend Lee Wallach went and did his thing, which some of you know about Lee. I mean, I saw all these folks. But it didn't diminish anything that was happening here. And, and it just made us even greater. On, on the music team, man, we've got some of the best musicians going anyway. We've got the best... The jazz, the jazz musician of the year is in here. You know, that's how good Jonathan is. M Matt has Grammys going on. I mean, we've got that. We've given away good musicians even. Andrew Tinker, the guy went to go work at Disneyland and do great things in L.A. because they learned those universal principles that they can apply. And, and I've seen it. And we keep tithing those people out, tithing those people. Have you guys seen Oscar on TV? I mean, he's everywhere. If they need somebody that looks Asian, I think they just go get Oscar because he's in all of those commercials. And I remember him being here, going to classes and learning that and saying, hey, I got to go and chase my dream. And we tied him to the universe. And he goes and does just that. We have so many examples of people who have taken those principles and done great things. They have proved T-S-R-W, this stuff really works, okay? So what I would leave you with is just grace. Grace. We didn't have to do anything to create these laws. All we have to do is learn them and put them into practice. And, and we don't have to say that our way is the only way. It's the way that, that works for us. And if we're grateful for all the things we have, if we're responsible for our own lives, take action, and are committed to excellence and realize that cause and effect is behind all of that, man, there are out. there's nothing that you can or cannot do. I, I'm a, here as a witness, but better yet, I'm here just as a crier in the, to tell you that all of you guys are witnesses. All of you guys are doing those same things with your life. And I left out tons of people, tons of people who I've seen around here using those principles making a difference. I am so glad to have had 25 years of being here. I am so blessed. It doesn't look like it did when I first got here 25 years ago. It was a smaller place. Now, there wasn't quite as much color in the community even then. It was, a, it was a different place, but it was a good place. And it was like, for me, a seed. And I got a chance to keep watching that grow and grow and grow. And, and now when I look out and see all of you and see what that has done, that, that makes all those days of, you know, pulling up the carpet and, and, and doing all the renovation stuff, all of it worth it. When, when I see more and more and more black faces in, in the audience as well as up on the stage, hey, that makes me know that when I was here by myself, or it was only me and, and Miss Edwards were here, that it was worth it. It was worth it to hang around. It was worth it for people to get used to seeing my black face so that when they saw your black face, they wouldn't be a problem. It was worth it. It was worth it for people to find out that 
A, he's human just like we are, because then we become radically inclusive. And it only works when all of us are willing to come here and be ourselves and be authentic. The 11 o'clock hour is still the most segregated hour in America. It is. And I've passed a number of big mega churches, black, white, and green, on the way to getting here. But my commitment is to be here, to make a difference here, to be a part of CSL Dallas here, to not be one who just perpetuates the same old myths, but to come here and help change lives and, and do my part. And I have been blessed and overly blessed to get a chance to do it. Hey, guys, uh, if you're here, get involved. You know, get on, go to classes, get on one of the cores, just volunteer. You get so, so, so much more by actually getting involved in, C in CSL. Do, do something. There's always something you can do, okay? And if you've got questions or concerns uh, for me, uh, I wish I could give you time afterwards and say, hey, ask me questions. Just, just find me and, and just pop, ask me. That's one of the best things I see around here is that Petra is more than willing to answer any question that anybody has about anything about this stuff. And I am too. So if you've got a question about something that I said today that you didn't quite understand or it didn't make sense or, or something pops up, just pull, me, pull my coat and holler and uh, we'll have a conversation. Meanwhile, just because you're my family and I like you guys, in Panky Hall, I left my copies of my four books and I left them there free. Okay? Now, normally, you know, I could make a little money. I could charge a little. Now, I wouldn't mind. So, so I did put a sign saying donations. So if it does kind of hit your heart to make a donation, feel free to make a donation. But they're there for you, and, and, and it's just my way of giving back a, a little bit because uh, I love CSL, I love you guys, and I love CSL Dallas. With that, I'm out of here.